All right. Well, hello, cram stuffers. Uh, first things first. I got a little note or a little uh, list here, errata from the other video that I just made. Uh, first is Cooper Anderson Cooper. Well, of course, his name's Anderson Cooper because uh, his dad's name was Cooper and his mom's name was Vanderbilt. And in the United States, we take the male last name, right? It's a, a patriarchal patriarchal society, not a matriarchal society. So, of course, his name's Anderson Cooper, even though he's a Vanderbilt. All right, but still, uh, the fact is that uh, people that expose the fact, and a lot of people that I know, well, not a lot of people, a couple of people that I know, thought that that was common knowledge, but then when it was put on Twitter, David Seaman, uh, by David Seaman, uh, he lost his account, <laughs> right? Who else just lost his account? Julian Assange. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but anyway, uh, Cooper definitely was a, Anderson Cooper definitely was a intern at the CIA, and he reads you your nose. And he's a Vanderbilt, one of the wealthiest families there. Really, that's where you're going to get your news? You're not going to get it from, uh, you know, a gumshoe that's out there reporting and doing all kinds, right? Just the, the common folk that are out there uh, from the middle class and maybe even the lower class that gets into journalism and wants to tell the truth and expose the media or expose politics or expose the corruption or go after the, you know, true stories about whatever the hell it is, energy or drugs or whatever. No, you don't want that. You want to get it from a guy that used to work from the CIA. In fact, all many of them. Look up Operation Mockingbird. That's not a joke. Uh, same thing with Operation Paperclick. Took them about 20 years to infiltrate and take over our government. Shot Kennedy, and we've been under that ever since, right? That's the other thing, right? The single bullet theory, they lied to you about that. Uh, more recently, they lied to you about 9-11. They lied to you about, obviously, they lied to you about what was going on in Vegas, and that story fell apart so fast it was ridiculous, and then all of a sudden, shh, right, biggest, right, it was at, they were putting it out as the biggest, um, you know, amount of, the biggest shooting ever in the history of ever, which is not true, but I mean, still, they, they, that's the way they build it, and that was, you know, some lone gunman with, with bump stocks, Anybody that uh, has made noise about the fact that there were more than one gunman there also, just like there was more than one gunman back there when they shot Kennedy, there was at least two gunmen there, probably more than that. There was a conspiracy going on, shot that man in the head, uh, edited the tape so you couldn't tell that the car had stopped, and then the guy from the gutter shoots him to almost point blank right in the freaking head. Uh, but no, it was a single bullet, and then you got you guys arguing for days. I mean, been on construction site, and said, am I ever going to get an apology from these fuckwits? that thought it was a single bullet, never, never going to get an apology. But it has been now proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that there was more than one gunman that shot Kennedy. And quite a few of my friends are going, <clears throat> they've woken up to the fact that, oh, wait a minute, the media does in fact lie, and that we had a little coup uh, back there, well, actually a big coup. And ever since then, this explains the evil and vile behavior, these p ugh, satanic pedophiles that have taken over your government. This is how they keep their secrets. This is how you join the club. Um with that pedophilia and it was huge industry because you got to uh, procure the children and I want to talk about that it's not just CPS right war zones one of the reasons why we make such chaos in the world is so that these fuckers can can uh, take these children who are in distress situations and separated from their parents or maybe their parents have been killed in war or whatever bombing and so on and these kids are vulnerable and then they ah uh, it's just the most disgusting vile thing um and also, like I said, CPS in the other video, I put the links underneath there. Uh, any children, a lot of the children organizations and foundations out of Hollywood and some of the other places looks like they, that's how they find the children. I mean, it's just disgusting what's going on. Uh, let's, oh, the other thing too is that guy, it was not nine days before the solstice. It was 11 days before the solstice uh, on the 10th. So it wasn't nine days. The guy that uh, was making noise about Clinton Foundation, Haiti, again, see, ha any kind of natural disaster, Haiti, with the hurricanes, with uh, earthquakes, with uh, whatever it is that devastates an area, I feel uh, terrible for some of these children around the world that, uh, I mean, they have devastation hit and then our evil satanic pedophile procurers, these the, ugh, Satanists, go in there, grab the children, and then sell them into slavery. Uh, and and the parents aren't there to even look for the children a lot of times, and that's what the ones they're looking for, because their parents have just been killed in a natural disaster or whatever. Anyway, that's how they procure these children, um, and it is big business. And then they got to get rid of the bodies. And then this is the other thing. Once these child slaves, like even in uh, Libya right now, there should be no fucking argument over that whatsoever. In Libya, there is, I mean, it's made the world news, it's all over the place, that Negroes are being sold into slavery 
uh, some of them for as little as $600, $400 in open markets in public uh, in Libya. And that's 100% because of us, because of us knocking down Gaddafi and, and kicking over that government, making chaos over there also. Uh, so that we could steal their resources, and you know, what's one of the first things we did is 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 get the oil privatized, so that it could be in the hands of private. And that was Tony Blair. And, well, I don't know. That was a bunch of them. Uh, that Clinton definitely had a hand in it. Obama had a hand in it. But I mean, all the world leaders of that time. I mean, even Obama. I mean, from what I understand, Gaddafi was just like, "What the fuck are you people doing?" Because he was playing ball, more or less. Uh, but no, they wanted to kick him over, take his oil, make sure they didn't have a uh, gold dinar, make sure there was no threat to the currency, right, our FRN. Oh, it's crazy. Now, this is the other part of it, and not, not just in Libya, but also here in the United States and around the world. You happen to have, as you are sold into slavery, and it turns out they do a, a, a few tests on you, and you happen to be a match for somebody who's looking for kidneys or eyeballs or livers or whatever organs they can hack out of you. Um, well, they bought you for 400 bucks, and lucky day, turns out, well, bad day for you, but lucky day for them, turns out that uh, you match uh, one of the people on the organ donors list. Like I said, this is big business. You guys, just, just, we've been clueless this whole time. Uh, you're dead. You're probably dead the next day, right? They will hack out your organs. Now, they might sell you to the uh, satanic pedophiles, and if you're young enough, and first they will abuse and, you know, just do the most heinous things that, once again, most people can't wrap their minds around. Um, it's disgusting to even talk about it in this happy, uh, you know, because today is Christmas Day. But uh, the fact that you guys, and, and we'll talk about that too. Like I said, so many things to talk about. But the idea is that if they get a match, you're dead because the, a kidney is 20 grand. So if they bought you for four or six hundred, that's a hell of a great return on investment. And they will do the test and the DNA and all that other stuff to see if they can find somebody that matches one of their slaves. And then that slave will get hacked up and turned into money, right? Um, these people have no conscience whatsoever, right? Don't think about them the way you think about other people. They're not like us. They're psychopaths. They're beyond redemption. Um, and when it comes down, when the accountability comes forth, and it looks like it's going to, right? So many of my friends have become jaded and so forth. But we got there's a new sheriff in town. We got guys like Sessions, who I'm not a big fan of either, uh, especially with his uh, stance on marijuana and and cannabis and so forth. Them them that that first right. What did he say? That uh, people are just not educated about marijuana because we're all clueless, and he's the smart one. Um, but you know, and it's not that he's a, uh, connected to private prisons and it's not that he's got uh, pharma uh, making donations and, you know, I mean, just take a look at, uh, who owns our, uh, government and, uh, Jeff Sessions is not, uh, immune. However, he is in fact, uh, opening up, I mean, just very quietly on Friday, opened up, uh, new investigations in the Obama and Hezbollah, opened up new, I mean, there's, but just take a look what, what, what happened there. Stealth Jeff. They used to call him the silent executioner. That turns out to be true. I did a little uh, digging on that one. And yes, when he was uh, AG and when he was down there in Alabama, he was known as the silent ex executioner. And see, this is the thing. I've said this many times. First rule of Fight Club, you don't talk about Fight Club. First rule, you don't let him know they're under investigation. He plays dumb, right? He plays clueless, like this old doddering guy, right? Sessions, oh, that marijuana, oh, that weed, and so forth. He knows. He knows how he looks, right? That's part of the plan. Uh, un but unfortunately, he's also going to actually go after the people uh, in it, you know. Anyway, but the idea is that's a subterfuge to, uh, to make these people uh, unaware of just how deep in hot water they are because we have an inspector general with 450 agents that has come out and uh, while our Congress was trying to get a hold or a handle on this uh, special counsel and some of these FBI agents, and by the way, uh, when they ask for evidence from Congress, again, it's not optional. You don't just go, oh, well, no, we're not going to turn this, these, this paperwork over. Oh, no, we're going to sanitize our, our uh, hard drives first. Oh, no, we're going to destroy Blackberries with hammers first, right? No, when Congress asks you, right, that evidence needs to be preserved. That's the law. So these guys uh, disobeyed the law just on that. But uh, what is contained in those emails is mind blowing, and it blows my mind. If you, I'm going to put a couple of links if I can find them, I can barely stomach it from uh, mainstream media, and what they're trying to say is that oh, the judiciary, uh, the, right, the House Judiciary Committee is colluding with Trump to thwart an investigation. No, what the House Judiciary Committee found out because uh, after asking for emails and asking for documents from the uh, DOJ 
and FBI and being stonewalled and then getting those documents from the inspector general was that these guys colluded with, and when I say these guys, I'm talking about Obama, uh, the DNC, uh, various Democrats in the FBI and DOJ that were supposed to be impartial agents. Uh, the, the list is pretty long, actually. Uh, that these guys actually were fucking around getting warrants from uh, judges based on false information. And by the way, okay, well, okay, let's just back up, all right? Let's just start and see see if I miss anything. You can put it in the comments if I if I miss anything. So this woman, Hillary Clinton, cheats Bernie Sanders. Let's start with that, okay? She and it's absolutely obvious to anybody with a brain that he's filling stadiums and she can barely fill a room. Uh, she cheats him out of the, and that's another thing, because there's so many things to try to cover here, because that's another thing. Were you thinking that in Alabama that they weren't expecting cheating after she just cheated Bernie, after the DNC just tried to cheat on, in the, well, didn't try, got away with that one, and then tried to do it in the uh, general election, not just the primaries, lost on that case, but they were obviously cheating, obviously, right, all this vote rigging and so forth. Well, May 11th, go take a look at the executive order there. He, he's put a commission to, to uh, look into uh, voter fraud and put people on notice that if you do uh, engage in this activity, uh, we're, gonna, we're after you. So anyway, the, she cheats her competition, uh, Bernie Sanders, and I guess they you know, paid him off for the House. And I mean, the, the Bernie bros, like, you think I hate Hillary? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, the Bernie brother bands out there, because I mean, I met with them in L.A. They were everywhere in L.A. There were, I mean... This yard signs and bumper stickers and on and on and on, all up and down. I mean, I was traveling throughout California, and I didn't see anything for Hillary, but I saw lots of stuff for Bernie. And uh, even uh, like going out at night, like these young kids that were like, so excited about Bernie Sanders and so forth, never heard anybody excited about Hillary Clinton. Anyway, she cheats him, uh, procures the uh, nomination for the, from the Democrats, and then that whole thing, there is so much dirty skulldudgery there, murders and all kinds of stuff just on that portion of it. Okay, somehow the Democrats who are just, I mean, what the fuck? This lady just uh, cheats Bernie and you vote for her anyway because you can't figure out that she cheat, right? Okay, fine. Uh, I'll, we'll we'll kind of sort of let that go because you were so hip, I mean, so wanted to beat Trump so badly that you were willing to look past the fact that uh, the person that you put in there was a cheater. Right, just based on that, she shouldn't be in the White House. But okay, fine. We'll look. We'll 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 say that our society has fallen so fucking far that you Democrats can't figure out that uh, the person that cheated Bernie Sanders probably shouldn't be your candidate. All right, fine. We'll we'll let that go. Um, then and then all the stuff that goes along with that, right? And they try to do Russian hackers and all this other stuff. So understand, Assange and a few of these other guys, like I said, uh, they have those emails. They also have. Uh, it becomes very clear to me. Uh, that uh, people that held on to Wiener's laptop, they were also a little careless. And there are some people that have those documents, now, or, or those files that were on Wiener's laptop. Those files are explosive. In fact, I would be afraid to download those. I have quite a few uh, pieces of email from, because of the uh, Assange dumps and so forth, because I like to go through them. I don't want people to tell me what they say. I like to read them for myself, right? Um, but there's files on that computer that if they're on your computer, it, it's against the law to even have them on your computer because it shows uh, child porn. It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, satanic pedophilia is there in those uh, files. So even just having them on your computer puts you in danger because they are, uh, I mean, it's 100% against the law. It's, I mean, and that's why he called it life insurance. Okay, but it's clear that Assange has these things. Now, once again, Assange has gone missing. Again, he was going to release all... It was looking like he was going to release those. And, um, you know, they're trying to say that these are stolen. Well, why don't you fucking idiot Democrats and mainstream media personnel who have these huge uh, organizations that can look into, uh, you know, and do investigative reporting like you're supposed to. Why don't you actually read the emails? Why don't you actually open those files and see what is in... Uh, the documents and read the emails because if you read the emails it becomes very clear and it, it, not just Hillary but I mean the Department of Justice guys the FBI guys you read the emails it becomes very very clear that they've broken the law so many times in so many different ways I don't have time here in this video I'm already going 15 minutes long I mean you know, I would need another hour and a half just to list all the damn uh, 
breaches of Title 18 when it comes to, I mean, money laundering and obviously child porn um, and on and on and on. I mean, murder and mayhem at the highest order from more than just a few. I mean, you can't just point your finger at Hillary Clinton. And this is the other thing, you fucking Me Too people, really? You bitches? You, uh, <sighs> right? Looking right at you. You know for a fact this pedophilia is going on, right? You sold your bodies, and that's part of the Hollywood thing. I mean, that's I, and I don't really have that much of an issue with that, actually, when you get down to it. Uh, I know a lot of you Christians will be aghast, but I mean, prostitution, if you want to prostitute yourself, you're a prerogative, right? you got to pay the price for that. Um, but if you're coerced into prostitution, that's uh, now we start getting, yeah, now that becomes problematic, and it is the responsibility of the strong to protect the weak. But a lot of these women knew full fucking well what they were getting into. And they reaped huge benefits. They're multimillionaires. A lot of these movie stars out of Hollywood have more money than you and every fucking buddy you know combined. Right? That's the price they paid for prostituting themselves to these powerful men. Right? And it is sex abuse. I'm not going to say it's right or wrong. Well, actually, I'm going to say it's wrong. But I'm not going to say that, that uh, you know, these women, the way they got their money and how they did it, okay, you know, uh, there will be others that will judge that. But the idea is that now you're going to come out when it's politically expedient and it's part of a pro program to try and get Trump, where you're going to say, oh, me too, and it was all these other, right? And then to try to get to the point where, like, with Roy Moore, you can just accuse a person, even if it's not true, right? And, you know, people will be like, women don't lie. I've had four women accuse me of, of having children. A couple of them I never even had sex with, right? Don't fucking tell me women don't lie. But the idea is that uh, they know about the pedophilia in Hollywood. They know, right? That's happened to them, right? They've had to sell themselves in order to make the millions to become the TV star or the movie star or the talking head on TV that reads you the news. I mean, a lot of that also is coming out, right? That a lot of these guys, uh, you know, if you want to be on TV and you're, you know, a beautiful woman and uh, you want to read the news or you want to be a movie star or you want to be a TV star, well... You've got to, you know, put out. Um, and a lot of them did, and a lot of them took the money, and they stayed silent for decades. And now uh, they're making noise. Yay, okay, I'm, I'm good with that, because a lot of these guys should be brought to justice, but don't fucking come off, uh, you know, if, uh, trying to grab the moral high ground when you fucking know these children are being raped, right? Because at least you were, some of them, not all of them, a lot of them were children at the time, but uh, a lot of these women were grown women making the choice. Right? That, that, I mean, because like, don't fucking tell me that you didn't know what was going to happen. The guys all had reputations. It was the open secret in Hollywood. I was just there. I just spent seven months there. And a year before that, I spent, what, four or five months there. Don't fucking tell me. Everybody knows. Everybody knew. So now um, what they're trying to cover still is uh, they want a lot of, right? They got the sock puppet over here talking about sex abuse and all these poor women and stuff like that. So that you don't look over here at fucking children being raped and murders murdered and their organs harvested and you know when they're cast aside might as well get some money out of it right so you just don't uh, throw the corpse away and burn it and see that's the other thing that's a whole industry right there is getting rid of the bodies ah <sighs> so disgusting and like I said, these people in Hollywood that know what's going on, you fucking marshals that know what's going on, these other people in the military and other places that have been fucking turning your back and turning your turning a blind eye and, you know, make it, like, they ain't no good guys here. And I was just having this conversation with my sons. There is, there are no good guys in this story, right? Because these fucking military men that are going after the satanic pedophiles, they have no problem bombing children in foreign countries. No problem. They have no problem letting the satanic pedophiles do the fucking things that they do, like 9-11 or whatever, and then capitalizing on that by going to war and making all kinds of money for profit and killing more and more people, you know, at least they're not American citizens, right? Uh, that they're, you know, over there in the Middle East, the children that just happen to get in the way of the bombing runs. Right? These are the same guys that are going after the satanic pedophiles. Okay, don't tell me about how, you know, the good guys, right? You Trump supporters out there, that I mean, he's already done more drone strikes than Obama, and it's year one. He's playing ball with the military like you wouldn't believe. And we are killing around the world still. And now he's going to clean up and that makes him, you know, clean up the pedophiles and that somehow makes him a good guy? No, that just makes him a less of an evil bastard than the guys that are raping children. Doesn't make him, you know, there's no saints here. None. No, none. Not any. 
And so don't be fooled and don't fucking, I mean, put your comments down there. I love to hear it, but don't fucking tell me that there's good guys and bad guys in this. There's, there's just bad guys. There's bad guys and guys that are worse than that. And that's it. And if you watch the mainstream media, what they're trying to tell you is that, uh, you know, the government uh, and the, you know, members of the Senate and uh, the House that are supposed to oversee some of these fuckers uh, and keep them in tow and keep them in check uh, are colluding with the president to bring down law enforcement or to, you know, to somehow undermine law enforcement. These law enforcement fuckers went and took after I got to never finish the story. I got to sidetrack myself, went and took a fake document to courts to get spying or to get permission to spy on Trump Tower on a man that was running for fucking president. I mean, do you understand how egregious this is? Like some people just, it seems to me that a lot of people just don't seem to understand. I mean, these are penalties that if this had happened 50, 60 years ago, the, the penalty is death, right? We're pussies now. Everybody just goes to jail if they ever, if we even get that. And a lot of you guys are, are trying to say that, uh, oh, they're not going to go to jail. Uh, you know, but no, I'm telling you, I think we have a new Department of Justice and they are going to, or, you know, the higher ups, the lower guys are still corrupt as fuck. It's pr pretty clear. Uh, but the idea is that these guys, uh, are not going to let them off and that they are going to actually prosecute quite a few people here. We've got many, many indictments. And again, um, it looks like they're going to try and sell it because a lot of the quote unquote good guys that are going after these other guys, they're also involved in the pedophilia. They're also involved in the club. They're also part of the death cult, right? But one part of the death cult, uh, decided that, uh, the other parts of the death cult are too crazy to, to even allow to continue their plans because their plan as written down in stone was to get rid of billions of us, billions and they were going to do it in, you know, there's multiple ways to do it. Uh, but one of the ways to do it is uh, just weaponizing your food, fluoride, etc. And that was the other thing. I never got to finish the fluoride thing. The idea is that, okay, to understand the halogens, if you take a look at the periodic table and you see the halogens. All right, fluoride, very reactive. So when they inject you with mercury or aluminum and you also have fluoride in your system from your toothpaste or your mouthwash or, you know, drinking it or however you're exposed to it, bathing in it, uh, inhaling in it, like you go to, uh, you come to this house, every shower, every faucet has a GAC filter on it, which, which, like I said, in Hawaii, we don't have to worry about uh, fluoride because we're too poor to fluoridate our water, but it takes the chlorine out. Um, chlorine, another halogen. Um, you get this in your system, add the metals in there, and it's a toxic soup inside your body that causes brain fog, makes it easier for you to be uh, controlled, makes it easier for them to lie to you while you sit there in your stupor where they're telling you complete and utter bullshit and you just kind of go along with it. Um, I've seen now, uh, I think David Seaman on a video and a couple of other people on a video uh, that have talked about how they went fluoride free and it's like a a brave new world like all of a sudden they're not tired in the afternoon all of a sudden the brain fog is gone all of a sudden they can think more clearly well if you can think more clearly and do more rationalization and, and reasoning then when cnn tells you that uh certain members of congress are colluding with the president to undermine law enforcement you'll just go well no because if you read the emails uh yourself uh, for your for, uh, with your own eyes these guys aren't supposed to be uh, partisan. They're not supposed to be like mean little girls uh, saying fuck Trump and all this other stuff and being on the FBI trying to find anything they can get on him to try to uh, remove a duly elected president of the United States. That is treason. Once again, that's subversion. There's, I mean, it just, like I said, I don't have the time to put all the charges against all the different players that are involved in this, in this crazy nonsense that uh, we're calling the United States of America. And by the way, that's a corporation. Right? Just look up USC 28, tells you directly uh, that this is a corporation. Therefore, when you deal with a corporation, the UCC is your best defense. But, oh, the UCC is private, and you can't read the UCC. Oh, I meant to go down to the car and get my UCC stamp, because, uh, you know, if an officer who has a gun and a badge uh, stops me, I'm not going to sit here for 15 minutes and explain to him <laughs> about corporate law and, and you know, uh, whether or not I'm involved in commercial endeavor on the public roadways and so forth, um, I'm just going to very quietly take whatever they give me, stamp it with the UCC, um, and maybe even write not involved in commercial activity or, you know, authorized representative for, but I'm not going to sign my name, because and they'll tell you, usually now they actually inform you when they give you a ticket that you don't have to sign the document. They'd prefer it if you did, but you don't have to. Um, 
And then when you go to a court of law, you have better stand. But most people don't know how to even deport themselves in a court of law, right? Our law is Christian law, right? And again, if you don't believe in these, uh, the, the way the Christians do or the way, it, what's in this book right here, this one right here, this was given to me by my mother many, many years ago. This Bible is, is more than 50 years old. Um, or actually, no, that's not true. More than 45 years old. Um, anyway, if you don't believe what's contained in those pages, doesn't matter. They do. And all of our law is based on Christian law. Not Judaic law, right? Judeo-Christian law, but Christian law. And our Christian law says, he who dishonors the other first loses. You don't dishonor your opponent. You don't dishonor the judge. You don't, I mean, doesn't matter. You're in a court of law. You got to play by their rules. And uh, if you do it right, uh, they'll kick you out of the court of law. They'll, they don't want you. They don't, and a lot of times they'll even stop on the side of the road uh, if you've actually gone through the steps that you need to take because uh, the cop will realize and, the, and will, you know, as they go up the level uh, to uh, somebody, because, you know, the, the guys on the street are not so well educated. Right? A lot of those guys, they absolutely believe that they're policing and, you know, if you're speeding or if you're breaking the law or not wearing your seatbelt or on your phone, that they should stop you because that's the law and that's, that that's what they've been instructed to do. They don't tell you to whom the law applies. Same thing with USC 26. To whom does the law apply? Uh, this whole thing about taxes, this is another thing. I don't, that's not something that I worry about because I don't pay tax because I don't owe the tax. And I pay taxes that I owe, but I don't pay taxes that I don't owe. Um... But the average person out there who's still playing the income tax game, paying taxes that they don't owe because the 16th Amendment, because they've never read uh, the Bush Arbor and uh, numerous other Supreme Court decisions that tell you it's an excise tax and tell you that, uh, you know, anyway, well, that's a whole other thing. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'll just put a link down there. Go down to Lost Horizons. There's a book uh, that he wrote, very short. You can read it in, you know, it's a day read, basically. And it gives you all the information you know to see how they misapplied the tax. But again, who does to whom does the law apply? Um, with these public servants who hold public office and are part of the corporation, the law applies to them. Right? Those laws are written as part of the oath, and when they get their pocket commissions, they are subject to the law. So a lot of these guys uh, understand what I'm telling you, and some of them uh, have... Uh, dropped off the bar, right? They're, they're not active, so they can't be censured. Uh, many of them are now retiring uh, in various ways, whether it's police or f judges or uh, a political office, because they cannot be censured uh, if they don't hold those offices, right? The laws do not apply to them. Same thing with the, uh, with the judges and so forth. They understand, that, and same thing with the lawyers, right? You can't be, if you're not a lawyer, you cannot be censured by the bar association that you're part of, right? Uh, so if you're not a lawyer or if you're on hiatus or whatever, you, they can't get you that way. They have to get you under other law. Anyway, the, the, once you understand uh, the concept of what law is, and there's a difference between fundamental law and the shit that they put on paper, which is basically just diminishing your rights by statute, uh, once you get a handle on that, you'll see and it will make sense what's going on uh, with Trump and a lot of these uh, law enforcement agents and a lot of these guys that are retiring from the House and Senate and so forth. Um, because uh, the, many of the laws that would be used against them cannot be used against them once they're no longer part of that, uh, those uh, groups, right? That class of people is the, the formal way to say it, right? Because uh, Title 26 applies to a certain class of people. Many of your motor vehicle laws apply to a certain class of people or a certain type of vehicle um, or a certain type of activity being conducted on the public roadways, right? Commercial activity. If you're not involved in commercial activity, a lot of these guys have no authority over there, over you. But if a guy with a badge and a gun thinks he has authority over you, um, don't fucking piss him off. Otherwise, you can see they'll get shot because they're at the point where comply or die, right? Because this is the thing in our society. Uh, and it tells you in every scripture, it tells you in those scriptures, right? Spare the rod, right? Spoil the child. Well, spare the rod, spoil the, the whole, not just the child, but your whole society. Because a lot of these thieves and villains have been getting away with murder literally for so long that they are so hubris filled that they just consider that they would continue getting away with it forever. They got away with it, murder in, uh, right? Who, who was uh, charged for JFK's murder, right? They got away with murder of a president, not just a regular common folk, right? Not just a, some Negro that, that had a broken tail light that they shot, uh, but the fucking president of the United States, they got away with that murder. All right, once they got with it, now they're emboldened, 
right? And then uh, they got away with 9-11. M- m- thousands of murders there, right? People jumping to their fucking deaths. And you guys are, are trying, right? And we just, now it looks very clear to uh, anyone who's paying attention that, yes, the Saudi Arabians financed that. Yes, that was, that was uh, Saudi money that uh, did that. Same thing with uh, the latest story that, that just it spiked and disappeared because the holes were so many now that because we, we have this uh, medium called the Internet where we share information. See, Julian Assange and all these other people, they are of no use without guys like us sharing that information to the common folk. Because if, no, if the tree falls in the forest and there's nobody to, to, to tell you about it, then nothing happened. Right? So Assange, it looks like he has documents... He has data files. It looks like those careless New York police officers. Uh, somehow he has managed to get Wiener's files. And what's on that laptop? They don't want exposed, right? What was on their Blackberries? What was on those other uh, things, right? Because the FBI and DOJ just assisted uh, many criminals in the fr- previous administrations, Bush's, Clinton's, Obama's, uh, and many of their underlings and so forth with destroying evidence, and they thought that they were going to hold the office of the president with Clinton, and they were just going to continue whitewashing and continue this crime. Now, when it comes to the tax law, like I said, uh, the average person is going to make out. The average person is going to make out uh, quite well, actually, because you're going to get double the deductions uh, for each child. You're going to, I mean, do the math, and hopefully I can find that, um, because there's been now a couple of people uh, on mainstream media kind of having to bite the bullet and tell you the truth which is the average person not just the super wealthy but the average person is going to receive benefit from this new tax plan um there's one where it's like oh you know twelve dollars for birth control in a month is is like just too much right the republicans are like we don't want to pay for your birth control and the democrats are making a thing like oh these poor women can't afford twelve dollars a month right makes i mean like it's just it's devastating that they have to pay 144 dollars a year for their birth control well guess what um you're going to get back 12 to $18. The average person is going to get back 12 to $18 a week, right? A couple of hundred dollars a month, uh, you know, from anywhere from 75 to $200 a month. And for the average person, these fucking Democrats are so out of touch with the people that for 200 extra dollars a month, right? Nothing changed. You didn't have to get another job. You didn't have to go get a part-time job at McDonald's. You got an extra $200 a month doing nothing else but the fact that uh, Trump signed this tax reform. Uh, that's going to be a huge, huge difference for a lot of uh, Americans. Further, that pay tax. Further, he uh, has lowered the corporate tax rate. And this is, of course, a huge boon for the corporations. But guess what? The corporations that are already here are immediately now have a financial advantage over co- co- companies that took their uh, operations overseas. Right? Because our corporate tax rate is now lower than Mexico. Why would you have a factory in Mexico? You can make more money and you can keep more of your own money if you brought your factory back here. And guess what? When you bring your factory back to the United States, you'll be employing Americans. Um, same thing with China, right? The, 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 and then see, this is the other thing. With China, people have this thing that, oh, it's just all about the fact that the Chinese don't charge as much tax and, they've, they, you know, and their labor is super cheap. No, there's billions of Chinese, well, there's a billion Chinese, hundreds of millions of Chinese, and in that hundreds of millions, there are uh, huge amounts of skilled labor, uh, engineers and tool engineers and manufacturers. People, like, one guy was saying, I remember him, and it hit me clearly, is that uh, in the United States, you might be able to fill a room with five or six guys that have this uh, specialized expertise. In China, you can fill stadiums, literally, or not stadiums, but big rooms full of uh, engineers and so forth that have very specialized knowledge for tooling or for, um, you know, certain engineering and so forth, certain software engineering, you know, firmware, hardware and so forth. And these guys uh, have those skills in the United States. We have them, but we don't have them in abundance concentrated in air. So some of those companies are not going to come back from China because they can't, you know, they cannot uh, find the people they need to fill the positions that the company needs. So they're going to stay in China. But a lot of other ones, not as skilled, and the factory workers and so forth, uh, are in companies that, you know, you can teach these people on the job or you can give them some training, uh, you know, vo- vocational training, and then put them to work in your factories and so forth. Uh, and that those jobs actually pay pretty well, are coming back to the United States. 
um, because now it makes no sense to be overseas. It makes no sense because, I mean, we're talking like percentages that are big, like 10, 15, sometimes a difference there um, is huge. But what they were doing, what these Democrats were doing, what the, and globalists, not just Democrats, because a lot of rhinos and other Republicans were involved in this also, uh, dismantling this country, because we are the last bastion of defense for the human race. That's not a joke. That's not hyperbole. We, I mean, we are the last country that was founded and had, could do anything about it with a military and with a populace that was armed that uh, understands principles of freedom, right? Look at our constitution. We have high ideals. We don't live up to those ideals. Make no mistake, I'm not fooled. We do not live up to those ideals. But as countries go, uh, most of them, it was a lady in a lake. It was a descended from dragons. It was whatever the fuck it is, is that they that, that have their, uh, you know, uh, ruling class or their kings and queens or emperors or whatever, and it's, their governments are descended from that. Our government, on the other hand, was made by Masons, <laughs> right? By these Saturnists uh, that believed in the cube. There's no question Benjamin Franklin was one of them. They found children in his floorboards, for God's sakes. Um, but it was founded on the ideals of, you know, freedom of speech, the ability and uh, to protect yourself, right? Self-defense. And uh, so you should be able to self... It, it, there should be... The, the, your government should not be able to just roll you over, Right? Uh, and you found, and this actually works quite nicely, right? These fucking thugs um, who had made feeding the homeless uh, basically a, you know, crime. Uh, so what did they do? They all brought weapons with them, right? Had weapons slung over their back, AR-15s and others, and they went out and fed the homeless, and lo and behold, they didn't get fucked with because force, right? Force fears force. And right now, what they were trying to do is make it so that the United States government had the monopoly on force, right? Your police force... Your, 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 at the local, state, and federal levels had a monopoly on force, and the poor peons uh, have no force, right? We have no guns, we have no ability, right? So that if you get stopped, or if you know, you're out there peacefully protesting and so forth, then we've seen that a, a, more than a few times where the guys show up, uh, the militias show up well-armed. Everything's nice and polite, right? Uh, much more polite than if the police were there, because a lot of times the police are there and they stand down, right? I mean, it's, and it's been always been the case. The Klansmen and so forth, that was why they wanted these Negroes disarmed, because they didn't want you having been able to shoot back. Same thing, Antifa, same thing, right? Who do the Democrats give us? The Democrats give us the Klan. The ge Democrats give us Antifa. The Democrats gave us, you know, a violent end to slavery in uh, World, War, uh, World War, in uh, the Civil War um, here in the United States. I mean, it, it's just amazing uh, that I still have... Uh, slaves on the plantation that laud their masters. They think that these guys are just the greatest thing, right? These uh, Negroes that still support the Democrats that absolutely enslave you. And they keep you ignorant. Like I said, it's your first time, really, right? So uh, they don't have to work. You have to work, right? You pay tax. You pay, right? You t right? If you start a business, if, you d if you're a laborer, whatever it is, you take a portion of that and give it to them and they don't have to work. Right? And you see these career politicians never fucking held a job in their goddamn lives, and they're millionaires now, right? They're making $100,000 a year, $170,000 a year, uh, give them 30 years in the Senate or the House, and they come out multi, multi, like 70, 80, 100 million dollars. How are they doing that? Right? Really? Can't do the math? Really? Can't figure that shit out for yourselves? Have to have somebody tell you? I don't think so anymore, right? Most people have woken up to the fact, except for a few. Uh, but I mean, we're waking up in droves. I am pleased with my countrymen. They're waking up uh, in droves and droves and droves. And you guys better understand that there are, it's not me, it's the millions behind me that are waking up to the fact that you guys are satanic pedophiles and it's coming to an end. Um, they, that you guys are bombing children in foreign countries based on bullshit and it's coming to an end. And if you guys don't fucking uphold your oaths and do what you're supposed to do, there is an angry populace, right? And it is starting to boil. Now, here's the thing. Some of that angry populace, and they're angry because of, uh, you know, they have reason to be angry, uh, but they have been mind controlled and they have been shifted. And I won't say mind control programming. It's just constant programming so that they believe uh, the Anderson Coopers and these other talking heads that are part of the cult and protecting the cult, uh, when they say Trump is this or that, or, you know, they go, want to go after the president because they, I mean, that office has been corrupted. Make no mistake. Satanic pedophiles, demons, so forth, have been in control of that office for generations. So they are sure 
like just like the FBI guys that got the FISA warrants, that Trump is one of them and just as evil and so forth, and he's not on their side. Looks like Trump is actually trying to do a few things that he said he did. I was looking or said he was going to do, going back for generations, like Ron Paul. Uh, Trump has pretty much said the same thing since he was on David Letterman in the 80s, right? And now he's actually, uh, I'll put some links, I'll put a bunch of links down there, uh, back when Trump wasn't running for office and people were literally begging him to, uh, because he was talking, just talking sense, as Americans like to say, right? It's just when he spoke, right, these guys... Uh, in the UN and other places that take our money and establish in the back, well, guess what? You're not getting any money anymore. Um, these trade agreements, TPP and all these other agreements that were just raping us, well, we got out of those agreements, right? The climate accords that were just raping us again, uh, where other countries were benefiting off the slave labor of the United States, uh, that's coming to an end. Right? And I know you guys think you're free, right? Oh, we're free here in the United States. Uh, we're not, what is he talking about? They've, this is your, not your first time and now you've been enslaved. Well, no, you're, you, they, they have tricked you into thinking that you're free. And once they trick you into thinking that you're free, this becomes very easy to enslave you. Right? Uh, you're basically free. A lot of people have figured out you're free range slaves. <laughs> you're free range. You, you don't have to, they don't have to lock you up in the plantation. The whole freaking country from one end to the other, doesn't matter what you do, they take a piece of tax. Right? You buy some gas, they take a piece of tax. You buy uh, fucking chewing gum in some states and they take a piece of tax, right? They just take money from you in every way possible. They license this, they license that. You used to have freedoms, now you got to get a license. Now you got to pay a fee. Now you get a permit. Now you got to get a permitting fee to build a damn house. Now you got to get a permitting fee to trap whatever it is, right? You, you got to get a permitting fee to feed yourself uh, for hunting or fishing or whatever it is. You got to pay, you got to pay, you got to pay. Um, and they don't, I mean, they take a little bit at a time. They don't take it all, right? We, they used to just take it all. They used to take all of your slate. You'd have to be, sit on the plantation in a, in a bunkhouse and go to work until they tell you you don't until the day is done and then uh and you got to keep none of that labor and you went back to work the next day until the day you died they worked you to death um that was a very efficient uh form of slavery uh but the slaves are unhappy <laughs> when you do that so now with the the slavery is they take just a little tiny piece. They don't take the whole thing. They just take little piece after piece, right? They give you a traffic ticket. They give you a, you got to buy a permit. You got to pay your income tax. You got to, right? Um, here in the United States, uh, property tax. You don't own your house. Right? I go to other countries, no tax. Once you own the thing, you own the thing. You don't continue to pay tax. Here in the United States, if you don't uh, pay your property tax, the county will take your house, right? The county will take your property. You don't own the thing. You can't tell me. I mean, the socialism that, that's going on is very uh, subtle, but uh, and they do it time after time. And then you come back for another lifetime, and they, they suck everything they can from you again. And then they do it again. And they've been doing this for generations. They've been doing this for millennia. And I know a lot of you don't believe this. A lot of you guys think it's the first time. They say, I, I've got one life to lead, and at the end of this life, I'm going to be judged, and I'll go to hell forever. I'll go to heaven forever. What's different than the Muslims that think that they're going to get 72 virgins? I mean, it's just a matter of degree for this foolishness. But anyway, uh, if you understand the, the, these basic fundamental principles, uh, you can prosper, is the, is the thing. Um, you can get out of that slavery. You can free your mind. And I need to make a, a video about the concept of ascension and so forth, because this is the other thing that, that's uh, coming to an end is that many of the people in the cabal, like I said, you may not believe what's in this book, but they do. And there's other books that you haven't read that they absolutely believe because there's a bunch of these guys that believe that uh, Satan or Lucifer or Saturn, that's the good guy. Uh, the guy in that book in the New Testament, that's the bad guy. Uh, they've got every, you know, up is down, left is right, black is white. They've got it all twisted around. Um, you need to decide for yourself, but you need to also decide that uh, you, if you want spiritual advancement, you can have spiritual advancement uh, and get rid of this squishy <laughs> thing that we're in uh, and, you know, progress. But don't be thinking that, uh, you know, it's going to be given to you. You have to do it yourself. You have to seek for yourself. No one gives you anything. I said this in other videos. Nobody's doing your push-ups for you. No one's coming to save us. 
you they, we will get, we have the tools and all of the things that we need that are necessary to save ourselves but nobody can go on the diet for you right it's coming up on new year's a lot of people make resolutions you, you either eat the food or you don't you either change your eating habits or you don't nobody can do it for you right so the idea is that it's the same thing with spirituality it's the same thing with knowledge nobody can get smart for you nobody can wake you up uh, but you you have to decide and when you decide big things happen rather quickly rapidly all right this is, and this this is why I, I i absolutely say educate self educate others we're gonna go we have tribulations ahead my friends we have big tribulations ahead and they're trying to figure out how to minimize these tribulations because these fucking idiot democrats believe the anderson coopers and the cnn and nbc and cbs even after the retractions even after they just got caught in a huge lie in vegas even after they lied to you about 911, and, and I, I can go down the list, right? The Gulf of Tonkin, World War II, Lusitania. I mean, just name it. That lie after lie after lie after lie. And these guys still believe them so, to the point where they think Trump is the bad guy, right? They think Trump is, is, uh, needs to be taken out and impeached, and their guys are good. Well, I'm going to tell you again, I don't find uh, much good on either side, but I see one side is at least trying to get rid of these satanic pedophiles, at least trying to get these guys to stop the treasonous activity and selling us out uh, to, uh, you know, the world elite. Um, and that guy is, comes, it turns out, comes from the Republican side. And that's the other thing that, you know, he could have easily, just as easily run as a Democrat. Right? It's like, I, I, one of the jokes is I was against Trump when he was still giving money to the Democrats. But the idea is that, uh, you know, he's better than a lot of uh, presidents that have come before him for the simple reason that he came uh, from a different breed and a different uh, thinking. But that different breed and that different thinking still isn't your friend, promise. They have, uh, you know, this New York real estate agent and, and uh, is, I mean, this is the world we're living in. This guy that was a real estate mogul is now president of the United States. This other guy, water filter salesman, supplement salesman, turns out to be a pretty good source of news. I mean, he's definitely biased. I'm talking about Alex Jones, of course. Um, but he absolutely uh, was telling you stories and telling you the truth as he saw it. Uh, and some of it was filtered. You can see that he has a track he can run on, right? They made him apologize about uh, Pizzagate and so forth because the satanic pedophiles are still firmly in control. But it's going to come out uh, soon enough that that whole Pizzagate thing with, uh, I mean, just look up Podesta Art, for God's sakes, and go from there. Look up Silsby. That's what started the whole thing, is when we started figuring out that these guys were running, uh, you know, child trafficking. And then uh, it began to dawn on some of us, you know, it took us a while because we're all can't conceive of these things. Um, that it was industry. It was big, big, it is big, big business. It still is big, big business. It has been uh, whittled away at by Trump and some of these guys around the world uh, exposing these pedophiles, but there are still plenty of them and they still have plenty of power. But what's the art of war? First things first, right? Uh, well, you got to know self and you got to know your enemy. Well, they, they knew their themselves and they knew their enemy. Um, the other thing that you need to know or need to go about doing is cutting off the supply lines, right? Cutting off their ability to do the things they do. So they're getting rid of uh, the Saudi Arabians. That's the pur purpose behind that. You'll start. You, if you look around, you're going to see that a lot of these drug lords and a lot of these other people that are doing uh, huge business in illicit substances are being taken down. Not because they're bad guys selling marijuana or selling cocaine or drugs, but because that money is being used to fund uh, terrorism and these satanic pedophiles and their agendas and so forth. So what they're doing is getting rid of the money, right? getting rid of their ability to uh, create huge sums. Then they're getting rid of the soldiers, right? getting rid of the little guys, getting rid of the in-between guys. And you're, that is what you're going to see is a house cleaning of the DOJ, FBI, other agencies and so forth. And then also uh, the criminal uh, element like, uh, what is it, MS-13 and a couple of these other gangs that they can use for cheap soldiers that will you know stab or kill uh, whoever they tell them to for basically no money because they're you know peasants um, they don't demand millions of dollars they just you know give my family a place to live and feed me and give me a, you know a, a bank account that I don't have to worry about too much which works out to be just thousands you know tens of forty fifty hundred thousand dollars no money at all when you have billions uh, and yeah they'll go off and kill a doctor they'll go off and uh, keep the silence happening um, when it comes to you know medical knowledge and so forth uh, microbiologists, cryptologists, 
Um, and anyway, I'm not even going to get into cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. That's just the whole, that's a whole other video in itself. And this one's already way too long. I'm going on almost an hour. Um, but the idea is that uh, these guys have uh, been outed by uh, one side of the faction. Uh, and in order to, then uh, they understand, in order to best them, they have to be able to take their resources. And the resources are the huge amounts of money that they were getting out of the Saudi Arabians, the huge amounts of money they were getting out of the drugs and heroin and so and other, and child trafficking and organ harvesting and name it, whatever the illicit, I mean, drug running, gun running, etc. Okay, they're not stopping that because, quote unquote, it's immoral or wrong in their eyes. They're stopping that because that's how these other guys are funding their operations. Guess what? That's how, quote unquote, the good guys are also funding their operations. Um, so it's one guy going after the other guy. Um, like I said, ain't no good guys here. You guys that are trying to fool yourselves into thinking that one side's good and one side's bad, all you got is bad and, and, and worse than that. Um, the enemy of your enemy is taking out some of your enemies, but that doesn't make him your friend. Trust me on that one. Uh, these people still have nefarious and dastardly plans in, in, in for control because they all bottom line is these guys want control and they and they want control of the planet uh and they want control of the humans on the planet and they want control of the energy that we make see this is the thing with humans unlike some other entities out there and i talked about this just a teeny tiny bit uh that you guys in this electromagnetic spectrum you only see a teeny tiny bit right you see less than three percent of and you hear less than three right you, you can hear that uh, but there's many frequencies that are coming out of that engine that you can't hear. Um, your dog hears more than you. Your cat hears more than you. Your cat sees more than you. Um, but the idea is that uh, they want control in this space. Uh, and whether it's, you know, and but they want control and the not as bad controllers uh, do not want to see hundreds and hundreds of millions of us die. So they put a uh, stop to it. And like I said, when I traveled uh, throughout the South, uh, not the Southland, but the Southwest, uh, talking to people about this thing we call Satanism and so forth, and the Satanic pedophilia and, and the rites and the ritual and the, the what they do and, and why, uh, the refrain, as I've said numerous times, is no one would believe us. No one would, you cannot believe the evil. And further, uh, they knew about it and they didn't say anything about it uh, because one, if you do, they'll kill you or they'll make you an example. And two, what's the point? Because the, at that time, now the peasants are about ready to hear it, but at that time, no one was ready to hear it. Nobody could, could wrap their minds around it. So they were just poo-pooed and, and, and shushed. Now, um, some of those same people are starting to come forward. And some of these people uh, that look the other way, they need to come clean about it and they will probably be forgiven. But those people that were participating in it and absolutely uh, drinking the blood and eating the flesh and profiting off of the child trafficking and so forth, no quarter, no forgiveness, right? And I'll leave you with this as we, I'm gonna cut this off before I get to an hour, but uh, the idea is that these guys or these people, these humans, uh, you are no better than them if you torture them to death once we catch them, right? We just had a horrifying thing happen here in, in the, um, yeah, on Oahu, in the state of Hawaii, um, with, again, some Satanists and so forth. And the refrain was, good thing the cops caught you before we did. Okay, no, shouldn't have been. You should have just, if, and if you're going to kill, then you kill, right? You don't torture and make them suffer, you kill, right? Hanging, electric chair. In lethal injection, whatever. No torture ahead of time. Torturing them makes you as bad or worse than them. Right? And I know some of you guys uh, have a lot of anger inside uh, you when it comes to these pedophiles because there's been some pedophiles showing up that have been just violated and you know horrifying things done to them also. Uh, and see, I am not in agreement with that because that makes you just as bad as they are. Fair trials, right? And then punishment. And the punishment should be swift and certain, whether it's life in prison or whatever the crime calls for. But that's the thing. We have spared the rod to the point where in our society, uh, thieves are not being punished the way they should be punished. 
uh, murderers and cops are not being punished. So what happens when the cops... I mean, because it's not all bad cops. There's plenty of good cops. Like I said, the lower-level ranked guys, they're in... They're tr trying to uphold the law and trying to do what they think is right, and they've been programmed and, and maybe lied to themselves. But at the same time... Uh, like I said, a lot of these cops, if they knew what was going on, they would do something about it. And a lot of these cops, they would like to do something about it, but they realize they can't do anything about it because their higher-ups would squish them or kill them or they have dirt, you know, they've got dirt on them that may or may not be true, right? Like, uh, many people have figured out that you go to a party and you wake up and you didn't do anything, but there's pictures of you where it makes it look like you did something. Uh, and they use that and hang it over your head. But most of these policemen and so forth are, are good people. But the ones that are bad and the ones that are, sh you know, comply or die and the ones that are shooting guys with their hands up, they're not being punished either. So, of course, it continues, right? Same thing with Congress. Same thing, spare the rod, right? These guys have been getting away with murder, getting away with treason, getting away with selling our uranium and other dirty deals, pay for play, where they, you know, they make policy that benefits or, and they get paid handsomely for that. Like I said, these guys making $100,000 a year and leaving Congress multi-millionaires, um, no punishment for that either. And it's been going on for centuries, well, decades anyway, probably centuries uh, in every other country. But in our country, it wasn't supposed to be happening. And we were supposed to have a media that exposed this shit and kept this from happening. It has not been the case. Therefore, it continues that you cannot spare the rod. You, you, because if you spare the rod, you spoil the society, right? Armed societies are polite societies. You fuck up, you get shot. Guess what? That doesn't happen very often. I mean, I've been out in, in certain states like Idaho and Montana where uh, there is a level of uh, vigilantism where it's like the cops don't need to show up because you're already dead, right? You break into a house and you get shot and nobody gets charged. Same thing in Texas, right? You break into a house as a thief and you get shot. Nobody gets arrested. And guess what? Crime in those kind of neighborhoods, right? Because they know that the, they're taking their lives in their own hands and maybe that VCR, well, VCR my ass, maybe that's uh, a TV, flat screen TV, that's how old I am, but maybe that uh, whatever it is that they're stealing out isn't worth their life, right? Uh, and a lot of these guys, I mean, you you see some of the explanations coming from some of these people. It's like, well, how are they supposed to make rent? How are they supposed to pay for their college and so forth if they don't steal? Uh, I don't know, get a job, I don't know, apply for a grant or something. But if you steal from somebody else, you steal from me. I don't have much uh, issue with, uh, I mean, people are like, oh, you know, there's a black guy that was, uh, anyway, he was murdered, or well, he was killed uh, after, because there's a difference, after uh, stealing a house and the next door neighbor shot him dead and nobody got charged. And they're like, oh, you know, and it should be protest. No, no, the guy was a thief, sorry. Right? It, it, the cops should have got there first, but they never get there in time. And uh, the cops had nothing to do once they showed up except clean up the body, right? As it should be, right? Don't steal. It's one of the it's one of the big ones, right? Murders in there too, right? Fundamental laws. It's one of the, right, but don't steal. Don't don't cheat on your wife. Don't cheat on your wife with your with your friends. Don't the uh, with your friend's wife. Don't do or husband or whatever. Don't do any of that. Uh, it's in the top ten list. Uh, the, the idea is that the, the laws need to be enforced, and when they are enforced, we have a nice, polite, happy society where your children can go out and play and you're not worried about them being fucking snatched by a CIA or FBI or God knows somebody working for the government to take these kids into, uh, you know, child slavery. Um, because the people that would do that uh, would know that if they get caught, they absolutely will be not only shamed, uh, but killed. None of that. They've been getting away with it for decades. They tried to tell you about it, right? The Franklin affair and so forth. But it all got squished, and these guys have been getting away with it now for decades. And dec well, going on to century, going on to millennia. And it needs to come to a stop. All right, Crime Stoppers. Good news, because lots of good things happening. Right? Bad news for some of you guys that still think that uh, what the mainstream media is telling you is true and that your higher-ups and the people that you vote for and, and worship, uh, whether it's fan worship or, or political worship or whatever kind of worship, even religious worship, uh, turn out to be dastardly demons 
uh, that's going to be bad for you because a lot of people are going to have a hard time. But if you look at the mainstream media, you can't blame them because if they believe that stuff, they, they, how would they know different if they, if they don't? I mean, because a guy like me, I'm just crazy, right? I mean, he's got a Santa hat, he's got crazy hair, he doesn't even shave before he just does the videos. Uh, you wouldn't listen to that guy. You want to listen to Anderson Cooper as a good-looking guy with his hair all perfect and makeup, and right? We're starting to figure out that's not the case. All right, Crime Stoppers, uh, that's me going on forever and ever. That was the longest one. I hope you watch this in, in several uh, parts. But I wanted to clear up that errata and, again, wish you guys the happiest of holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Melikalikimaka. Haole makihiki ho. Educate self. Educate others. We're going to get through this thing, right? E pluribus unum.